What's up, everybody? What's happening? I think I'm live. It says I'm live. I'm just going to assume I'm live. What's up? Sorry if it's a little loud in here. I don't know what the sounds like. Um, these live streams never sound as good as I want them to. But I have the air conditioner on right now because it's still like 90 degrees outside. It's really hot here lately. So sorry if the sound's a little wonky. And my computer is loud as fuck. My new computer, super loud. It's got giant 240 millimeter fans in the front. So kicks off some noise. How's everybody doing? Sup's up, Tony, my man. What's happening? Keeping it real, indeed. Put on my vape gear. Got the old school Suicide Bunny shirt. <laughs> vape Tasia hat. And the glasses. Which ones are these? These are Boss. They make a tobacco line of liquid. It's really good, actually. Fix it, Dan. What's happening, brother? Joel Rayner, what's up? What is going on? So, um, you know, had the mass shooting that happened and uh, was it yesterday? It's a damn shame. Um, crazy thing about that is that my buddy just survived a mass shooting that happened at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Um, he does catering and every year they go to the Gilroy Garlic Festival and um, have like a booth there you know sell stuff and he was um he was there too and he uh ran for his life hidden some yard somewhere you know what i mean um and we gotta do something about these shootings fucking shit's getting crazy but yeah uh you know uh my buddy's like i was telling you, he was at the gilbert Gullick festival um ended up having to leave his car all of his belongings everything because he just you know, shooting happened. He just bolted, you know, which is what you should do if there's a shooting. And um, uh, the FBI, I mean, he still doesn't have his stuff. He, he was able to get his car, um, but not until much later. And uh, the FBI is not going to, like, release his stuff to him. Everything's still a lockdown crime scene status. So pretty crazy. The aftermath of those kind of events can be really crazy. It can take months, years to really um, – get back to normal for the communities. If, if ever, you know, it's pretty crazy. So what's going on everybody? How's everybody doing? Um, yeah, let's hope this country gets into a better position. Um, but get all that negative shit out of the way. Um, hope you guys enjoyed last week's show. I uh, had Matt from suck my mod on the live stream. It was, it was good. I thought it was a good show. Um, very happy the way it turned out. It was fun. Had a good time. Had a good time. Um, got to answer, got to ask a lot of questions to someone who has, you know, more experience in the industry than I do for sure. And um, so, yeah, it was fun. Had a good time. Uh, I want to thank Frank, uh, Daytime Frank. He came on and uh, that was awesome. It was good. It's a good show. Good little show. Church, what's happening, brother? Um, so, yeah, so if you guys enjoyed that, if you haven't seen that uh, live stream from uh, last week, go check it out. Not right now. But after this one, you can go check it out. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody's Sunday is going along real nice. Got a nice little Sunday happening around here. Um, vaping on some different stuff. Everybody let me know in chat, what are you guys vaping on? And I will go through some of the stuff I'm vaping on. Um, uh, Matt from Steep E-Liquid, um, he was nice enough to send out a couple of bottles of Quick Shake to me and Panda. Um, I always rock the little, I don't know if you guys can see it. I got the little steeped poster here. I always rock that. Um, Shane Smith, what's happening, my brother? Um, this, if you have never had a chance to try this, Quick Shake from Steeped E-Liquid, uh, Steeped Vape Co. Uh, Steeped Vape Co. They make this. They make some hardware stuff. Um, like this is a little X1 Quick Kit, which, you know, I didn't rave about during my review, but I've actually ended up using it quite a bit. So, um, you know, it's got some issues. It, it's not like a universal tank. It's not a 510 threading. So like this battery does not work with any other tanks. This tank does not work with any other batteries. So that's a big negative in my mind. Um, but the reality is 
this is a good little thing for like salt mix and stuff. I've been using it like crazy. I like it a lot. I'm packing, man. You just you just moved. Oh shit. Good, good, good for you, brother. Congratulations. We want to get out of this apartment. Me and Maria want to move out of here so bad. Um, this was a great landing for us when um, I moved Maria here from Florida because housing in my area is few and far between and more expensive than it should be um, because of the marijuana industry, all the fires that we had locally, um, you know, we lost a lot of housing that was available. So um, when I moved her here, um, it was like right during that time where the fires had just devastated whole communities like Paradise and all these different communities up here in Northern California. And so we really thought housing was going to be a huge issue for us. And um, it ended up being, we were like staying with my dad for like two weeks and got into this apartment. And so um, this apartment was like a godsend when we got it. Um, but we just quickly outgrown it. Um, and you can see all Maria's slime shop stuff here. And back over here, there's a whole shelf of it. It's a one bedroom apartment. It's just too small for two people. And um, yeah, you know, we want to get a bigger place that has like a space for like, you know, recording and have like a little, little office space. This is just not the one, man. It's just not the one. Uh, I do like this apartment for what it is. Really cheap. Cheap for, for here. Um, we pay $700 a month. It's a one bedroom, one bath, obviously. Um, it's small, man. It's really small. And um, it's crazy because here, that's a good deal. 700 a month. Um, but yeah, man, fucking crazy. So Shane just moved to New York. Yeah, man. Welcome to the coast. Fucking shit is so fucking expensive. Good for you, brother. Good for you, man. Yeah. Um, like I was saying, man, it's $700 a month. To me, that seems cheap here, right? Um, but the reality is I have friends, you know, in the Midwest. I have friends all in like Nevada or Arizona, a couple states away, um, that pay what I'm paying. And they have like a two-bedroom house. So um, it's just a shame. Uh, I have family here, so I don't really want to move from here. Um, but it's hard to, you know, establish yourself. So shame went from 1K a month to 2K a month. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's, that's fucking crazy. I could do, see, I could do even up to like 1200 a month. I could probably swing that um, as far as like being able to live and, you know, pay that much um, out of my pocket. Um, but there's just, there's nothing, out, there's nothing out there. So, oh shit. So you're already, you are already in New York. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Fucking uh, living on the coast, you pay that tax, pay that coastal tax, whether it's on the East Coast or the West Coast, you're paying that coast tax. And um, I love California, don't get me wrong. Um, but if I had a good opportunity um, that popped up, or if I just had like a kind of, the kind of job that I could work from home, I wouldn't live in California, I don't think. I think I would move maybe to Arizona or New Mexico. It's just so much cheaper. It's just so much, just so much cheaper. It's fucking crazy. There we go. Glasses off. Yeah, man. Oh, wow. That's shitty, man. That's super shitty. Yeah, you know, that's the problem with renting. You get established somewhere. And you're always at the, you're always at the, you know, it's, it, you're under someone else's thumb. It's just like working for someone. Um, especially in my position where I work, we get all of our funding from like government grants and shit. So at any moment, boom, we could be done. Like very little notice, you know? And it's the same with the apartment, you know? They can fucking say, you have a month to get out. They can say you got four days to get out, you know? So it's crazy. Yeah, man, taxes. That's what it is. Um, so last year, I mean, I'm, for me, you know, um, I made pretty good money and um, between state, federal and local taxes, you know, and that's not even including, you know, like uh, paying, you know, what do you call it? Uh, in, uh, sales tax. I, 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 I don't even want to say how much I paid. 
I paid almost ten thousand dollars in taxes last year. Almost. It was like eight eighty five hundred. And that was just like I paid out taxes, right? Um, <laughs> that's not including sales tax. You know, if you if you include sales tax, we're probably talking another at least four thousand dollars. Because everything we fucking we, we spend everything that we get coming in. So um yeah, man, it's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, man, renting renting is such bullshit. Um it has its benefits, right? Like I like that I if something breaks, I can call my landlord. Especially where I live, they're pretty quick about coming over and fixing stuff. Um, but there's so many rules. Like we can't have a dog. Um, this place doesn't rent to people with kids, which is for us, it's okay because we don't have kids. Um, and it's not like a rule, but like when I was moving in here, um, the person who turned me on to these apartments, she said, um, yeah, they, they don't rent to people with kids. It's not like a rule because you can't, you can't discriminate against people who have kids. It's illegal. <laughs> um, but they just don't. They just won't, you know, rich people. So I know it's so crazy, Shane. It's so crazy. Um, some of the rules, it's, I mean, I think everything has some kind of basis where it's like, okay, there is a reason why there's this rule here, but be flexible, you know, be flexible. Being a landlord sucks. Trust me. I, I you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of people over the years who um, had rental properties and just known people who had rental properties, family and stuff. And um, it's not, a, it's not a good gig, man. Like, you know, it's, um, there's some nightmare tenants out there, you know, but um, we're pretty good tenants. We keep to ourselves and uh, I'm sure Shane is the same way. And, uh, so it's like, sometimes you just gotta be flexible with people, you know? Um, I'd like to own a home uh, just in California. I think it's, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I just don't see it happening. You know, um, it would, I got, I got still late start. See, my situation is, is different than a lot of people's situations because, um, I got into, hell, I was almost in my thirties when I got clean and, and went to college, let alone started like working, you know, like I had worked, I've been working since I was 13 years old, working in restaurants, doing auto detailing, um, construction, just bouncing around from career, you know, job to job, no careers, but just like jobs, you know? It wasn't until I was like 30 years old that I got like a career, you know, and um, it's just a late start, man. It's just a late start. Wow. Not even allowed to have a doormat. That's fucking crazy. See, it's just people get, it's like uh, living in a condo or something or like a, like, or like a high rise apartment building. Um, there's so many rules, right? Like no, nothing outside your door at all. Doormats, plants, nothing on your door, no knockers or fucking decorations during christmas yeah no sin and hello sin good to see you and there's just no way i mean it's fucking bay area is just the rent in the bay area is beyond my means let alone buy um we want to we would we would love to buy a house it's just like getting into a 30-year mortgage i'm almost 40 years old you know what's the difference in that in that scenario what's the difference between us renting and us owning, you know, I just, besides the fact that if, <laughs> if I miss a couple of payments, they come fucking kick you out and, you know, you have a foreclosure or, um, if something goes wrong, I'm responsible, you know, financially to fix it. Um, it's crazy. Yes. And, um, there, yeah, I think that's pretty conservative. 1.3 million is pretty conservative for the Bay Area. I mean, even around here, 600,000 is pretty common. Uh, for a mid range, like s small to medium family home, you know, with a garage and some some yard space. That's between, you know, I'd say between three and 600,000, pretty common, unfortunately, you know? And there's just no way, man, there's just no way. Um, the only reason at this point that I would buy a home would be to leave something for offspring, you know, which I wish, Hey, I wish my grandparents would have bought homes when homes around here cost $15,000, you know, um, and they could have left it, you know, that's something you can really do 
um, for your for your kids and for your family is to own a home, you know, own land. Like that's a good investment for your family's future, um, not necessarily your own future. You know, because for me, like I said, realistically, even okay, so let's say me and Maria started looking for a house to buy. It's going to be a couple of years, so I would be forty. I'm getting into a thirty-year fucking mortgage. I'm seven years old. When we finally pay it off, crazy, crazy. Yeah, not everybody is meant to be a homeowner. Um, I would love to be, man, but it's just, um, you know, you play the cards you're dealt. And uh, I fucked up my whole, the first half of my life. And there's no one to blame for that except for myself, you know. I'm the one who was getting high. I'm the one who was fucking up. It's hard to be mad at, my, hard to, hard to be mad at anybody except for myself. So. And, you know, you can't dwell on that kind of shit. It's got to keep moving forward. Um, you know, play keep renting, but like I do want to get out of this apartment. Okay, find a bigger place. And um, I, I, I don't know. I just don't know if this is where we're meant to be. You know, like Northern California. I love it up here. I do. But just financially, is this the best, you know, the best choice for us? I don't know. You start looking around. Start looking around. Um, the kind of work I do, luckily, or unluckily, you know, whatever. Um, um, I can find work pretty much wherever I go because there's domestic violence uh, centers and uh, rape crisis centers and stuff all over the country. So, yeah, Shane, that's another thing, man, is that it's hard when you got more than one kid. Um, you know, you just kind of hope that they can work that shit out um, or explicitly say, this is what, you know, is going to happen. Um, you, I mean, basically, you have to explicitly say, um, if you want both kids to get something, you have to say, I want both kids to, you know, one kid to get this house, the other kid to get this house. Um, because you can't trust family. You can't. Well, Sin, we all come out of it at the end, you know. That's all we can do is keep moving, keep on chugging. Yeah, um, bad relationships are... are we see a lot, at least with my kind of work, most of the, the abuse that I see um, in bad relationships are um, things like emotional abuse and what I would call financial abuse, which is someone either, you know, ruining or, and depleting your credit and finances, savings, stuff like that, um, keeping you from working, um, sabotaging your jobs, um, you know, just basically trying to fuck up, you know, not letting you be on the lease of apartments and homes, not letting you own your own car, stuff like that, that really affects you. Like I have 40 year old clients, you know, who've never, never had, they have a zero renters history. They have no credit at all, you know? So yeah, Shane, man, it's tough when you can't trust your own family, you know, it's really tough. I have a lot of family that I don't have anything to do with. Um, because I've, for a long time, I was a person you couldn't trust, you know. Uh, I try to rebuild those relationships, but yeah, I, you know. Yeah, gaslighting, man, that's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, when you don't work, um, you got a lot of time to sit around and fuck with someone else and make them feel like they're the ones who are crazy, you know. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sin, that's awful. That's awful. Very common for abuse to take the form of, financial abuse, you know, it's awful. Um, I don't mind, you know, I don't, I don't mind a relationship um, where one person doesn't work, one person does work. Um, if that's the, you know, agreed upon um, and it can work, you know, Kenny B, what the fuck are you doing, buddy? Long time, no C. And that's shitty. I'm sorry about that. That's fucked up. Man. Yeah, you know, family. When it comes to money, um, it's hard to trust anyone. Family, friends. Um, that's why I got out of the marijuana business, which locally here is big business, right? Um, that's why I got out of it is because I lost so many friends and family members um, who, because of money, because of 10 grand, because of a grand because of 500 bucks you know it's like people are so shady when it comes to money 
yeah, you know, Shane, um, Penn is a stay at home, you know, woman. That's it's our arrangement, you know. She takes care of me, and uh, I think, and I, she has money coming in as well. It's not like she doesn't have money coming in, but you know, she does this thing, and I do my thing. It's we work that out with each other. Oh, Sam, that's awful. Yeah, yeah, it's, she, you know. That's what I was going to say. So it's, it's like one thing if, if one person stays at home and they take care of all that shit, right? Like um, like Maria, she does all the cooking. She does all the cleaning, laundry. Um, and she pays a lot of the bills, you know? So um, it's about having a good partnership, you know? And um, an abusive relationship is just, there's that lack of partnership. Kenny B, man, it's been a long time. I hope you're doing well, man. And stand up pretty. You got all the people coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> oh man, I sent you a couple of messages, Kenny. I, I was worried about you, buddy. So um, I'm gonna go through what I'm vaping real quick. Um, I have the Panther RDA here on the Proton um, regulated mod. This is in bypass mode. Um, it's a good RDA. I haven't talked about it in a while, but the Panther RDA. Um, it's a great little low, like low price kind of budget RDA. Wow, that's shitty, Sam. <laughs> um, yeah, I was in a really abusive relationship when I was younger. Um, more physically abusive. Um, she um, tried to stab me, all kinds of shit. So. Man, hello, everybody. Good to see everybody. So, yeah, Panther RDA. Good RDA. And in here, like I was saying, I got the quick shake. Quick shake, man, this is such a unique, unique flavor. It's hard to even explain. I have a review of it. Go check out the review. It's like a strawberry milk biscuit fucking thing. Um, it's from the UK, so I'm shipping, I mean, it's, okay, this is their description. A sweet custard cream biscuit with creamy strawberry milkshake. Um, it is, the only flavor that I have ever had that tastes like this. It is so unique. And um, it's from the UK. And um, it says suitable for use in sub ohm RDA and RT, RDTA tanks. Very true. Um, man, what a, and it has the fucking, on the ingredients, it actually says the flavorings. Flavoring, strawberry cream, cookie, vanilla, sweetener. These guys are good guys. Steep Vape Co. Um, like I said, from the UK. So what you get is these 50 mil, uh, it's 50 mils of e-liquid with like a 10 mil Nick shot. Delicious. Fucking delicious. So unique. And thank you so much to Matt from Steve for sending that out. Um, good shit. You know what, Sam? People are what they want to be, right? Now, some people have mental health issues and drug abuse issues. And that's what keeps them homeless. Some people are just lazy. Some people just are fucking worthless and you end up where you end up, you know? Um, hey, God bless and hope that I don't end up on the streets, but I've been on the streets before. I've lived in my fucking truck for years, not for weeks or months, but for years. And the only person who put me on the fucking streets was myself because I was the one that was fucking my life up. And just like, you know, kicking your ex out, put him on the streets. He put himself on the streets, you know, don't be a piece of shit. And people will, will want to have you around, you know, <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Yeah, man. So cool thing. Uh, one cool thing that's happened to me at work is I've started going into the county jail, um, which for me is amazing. I am actually have a key for the county jail. Um, that's huge for me. I spent time in there, like a lot of time in there. And, um, that's really big for me, uh, getting to go in and work directly with the guys. Uh, I actually set up something, um, before so that one of our female employees can go in and work with the female inmates. It took a little bit longer to get me cleared because I do have a history of, of, um, being locked up specifically in that, in that, um, uh, jail. So it took a while to get me cleared. Um, but eventually I did. And uh, getting, man, getting to go in there, fucking amazing. So, fucking amazing. Kenny B, man, it's so good to see you in the chat. Man, it's so good to see you. Yeah, I've really been thinking about you guys a lot lately. Um, 
you know, lost a lot of friends this year so far. Um, had some other close calls like my friend, like, a, you know, being in that shooting. Um, just appreciate people more, you know. And um, we dropped, you know, lost John Mueller, lost my friend Virgil. Um, just, just shitty, you know. Uh, so it's good to see people come back. Yes, and man, therapy. It's all about therapy. Everyone, you know what? There used to be like this big stigma about therapy. Um, I don't care if you haven't even been in like some kind of big trauma. Um, ther therapy is beneficial to everyone. Everyone can benefit from going to a fucking therapist. Um, when I was first getting clean, like for real clean, so I'd been clean and relapsed a bunch of times, right? Um, but when I was like really getting clean, uh, part of my sentence at um, the jail, at the court, you know, uh, this judge had the same judge every fucking, um, what do you call it? Every uh, time I've ever been arrested, I had the same judge. Um, real good dude. And um, he told me the last time, he had his, his family had a history of addiction. And so he told me the last time I was in front of him, he said, um, you know, addiction is madness. He said, it's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. He said, you need help. And um, he said, part of my sentence was I had to see a, a therapist. And so I actually went to a rehab and they worked out to have a therapist come from. Going on. Can you guys hear me? Oh, no. All right. Are we back? That was fucking sketchy. I thought the whole computer crashed for a second. Kenny B, I'm go so glad to hear that you're still uh, still watching and stuff, man. Awesome. Can you guys see me? Okay. I'm back, right? Am I back? Thank you. All right. Thanks, Shane. Cool. Thanks, Danner. Um, yes, you know, that's that's the thing about therapy. So that's what I, that's what I was going to say was that um, the thing about therapy that's so beneficial, just having someone to talk to that you don't have any kind of relation to. Right. Like talking to friends, family, even really good friends. You're always going to hold back. You're always going to hold back the truth because the, our truths a lot of times are shit you don't want to share with anyone right shit you don't want people you have to see tomorrow to know about you and uh, that's what was so great for me to see a therapist man was um being able to be real with that dude he was a he was a guy like a man he was from the city like from san francisco and he would come up once a week to see me and um uh, this dude was like a real he's like a manly man like a real masculine dude and i needed that because um I kept thinking of myself as being weak and, and um, you know, like that I, being an addict was something that was like a, a flaw in myself and um, just didn't feel like a man, you know, and to have this man come in and really work with me, super beneficial to me and um, being able to just be fucking real and like tell my truth to this guy and have him just like not even blink, you know, just have him to be like, word up, you know, like I feel you uh, was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> oh man that can be a problem telling too much for sure um but yeah therapy fucking beautiful man and um i like that now that i'm able to work with men all the time you know um whether it be in the jail or men who come to my office you know kids at the juvenile hall i work with men all the time and uh, anytime there's a man who comes in basically they give them to me now <laughs> and um it's a beautiful feeling to be able to like do that for someone else just be those ears for someone else love it love it okay so uh yeah rocking quick shaking this um man this is still in my opinion what a good mod what a killer fucking mod um the only mod i like from Inican better is they released a uh right when 2700s um came out like not when they came out when they when they started be, being implemented for vaping um Inican released a single battery 2700 um, regulated mod. I can't, can't remember the name of it. Um, I have a review for it on my channel somewhere. 
And um, that was a killer little mod, it's like a hundred watt mod, a fucking killer little banger. I gave it away to somebody who was trying to quit smoking. I gave away so much stuff to people. You guys have no idea. You guys have no idea. If I would have had, if I would have kept all the stuff that I've gotten over the years, purchased, gotten from companies, I would have like the most mega collection. But I've I got, I got a big heart. People want to quit smoking. I want to help them. The thing that bothers me is when I've given stuff away to people, like stuff that I like, like RDAs, shit like that, right? And then you see them smoking later. That really bothers me. Don't be that person. So rocking that, um, rocking the TVL mod with the Axis um, tank on there. It's a single coil little RTA. Um, I don't know why I've been using the TVL for tanks basically ever since I got it. I should really use it for something that's like more suited. <laughs> this is good. And I have, um, I think I have quick shaking here. Yeah, pretty sure. Yep, quick shake. And then I have another tank, a very similar to the Axis. And these two came out, they were like really similar to me. Um, so this is the, fuck, I can't remember the name of it. Oh my God. Is it on the bottom? Yes, this is the Solomon II from Case. Killer little, um, it's a dual, little dual coil. They have really similar um, setups, like the way that they operate and stuff really similar. The Oceanus, thank you so much, Kenny B. Coming through in a clutch. The Oceanus, man, and they came with a, you could buy a kit. The one they sent me was a kit and it came with a really fucking amazing sub-ohm tank um, that, that had like a, a rebuildable section that came with it. What a fucking killer setup, man. That was when Anakin really started to become relevant again. And um, right when they stopped working with me too, because the person who was my contact there, his name was Dwayne. Um, if you ever see this, Dwayne, what up? Um, killer guy. Um, it's part of Anakin, uh, the United States branch of Anakin. And he was a fan of the show. So he would watch. And so he sent me stuff for review and um, he stopped working for Anakin. And so they, they don't send me shit anymore. <laughs> um, Oceanus, I want to, if that's still available, I want to get one of those. So this thing was fucking amazing. Okay, so yeah, so rocking a couple of little um, RTAs, both real low low price um, RTAs. I think both of these were sent from Heaven Gifts. Um, so what's up to Heaven Gifts? Um, yeah, the Axis and the Solomon II. The Solomon II I actually hated when I first got it. It took a long time for me to really wrap my head around here, around this RTA. And uh, in here I have, um, what the hell is it called? It's the One by Beard Vape Co. Not my favorite e-liquid. If you ever seen my review, um, I wasn't crazy about it. I'm still not crazy about it. But I don't have any white girl right now. My last. Really? Huh. Because every time I, maybe he just fucking said, fuck Travis. I don't know. Nick and Dwayne. Yeah. Dwayne. What a good guy. Um, I got to hit him up. Because the person I talked to last time was just some random rep from their marketing department and they weren't having it and i'll try to hit up Dwayne. what a good guy he was he was a really good guy um what was i gonna say oh yeah so um it's funny because I'm, I'm vaping the one right and I, I bought panda i bought all of it when i got paid and um she loves that shit and so i was you know i put a little bit in the tank i've been vaping a little bit here and there and i was kind of like still like yeah still it's, it's, it's just not that good. And I just got a comment on the video. Um, some Someone was talking to me like that uh, it's the best. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, what else we got here? Um, oh, um, so um, Heaven Gifts, speaking of them, they sent me the E-Leaf um, Tants pod system, right? Like a week ago. And or a month ago, and it, it actually didn't work. Um, it worked for like a day or a week or whatever, and then it stopped working. So they sent a replacement and um, got this, the Tans. It's really good. The Mesh Pro is a good tank. I like tanks every once in a while. I get these, I get these flows where I use a lot of tanks. So I was talking about these two that I have right now. I'm actually using the Kylan as well. Um, this is part of a trade I did with um, ADV for this um, TVL mod, he sent, he sent the Kylan tank in as just kind of a, uh, 
a bonus um, killer killer tank, and it looks so good on this mod. So, yeah, Kylan. Um, I think I have Uncle Junk's um, Junkyard Scotch. Got a bottle of that. Look how much I had to pay for that locally. Can you see it? No. 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 Well, anyways, it's twenty four ninety nine. It's fucking expensive. But again, I don't have any white girl. The last batch of white girl that I made didn't turn out. Something went wrong. So, um, and I need, I got to get the cash together to buy some more ingredients because I'm out of everything. I have no flavors at all. So I have to like literally start from scratch with flavors. It's going to cost me at least $30, like $35 is what it's, the price is to get all the stuff I need to make. Um, what do you call it? To make a thousand mils. So cause like literally I'm starting from scratch. So I have the nicotine and I have the VG, I don't have any of the flavors. So yeah. Yeah. Instead of buying this, I should have just bought, I throw another fucking 10, $12. Could have got all the ingredients I needed for white girl. Yeah. I miss not having white girl. I, I, I'm like literally fiending for it. I've been trying to like replace it with stuff that we have around the house. Um, I threw together, like I had some custard and a little bit of fresh strawberry and I threw those together and made this e-liquid here. It's in a fucking different, it's in a drip and vape bottle, but um, it's just not the same. White girl is my everyday vape all day, every day. And not having it for like a month has been really fucking rough. I gotta get some, I gotta get some, gotta make some. That's the only way I can get it. Um, oh, something interesting that I am vaping is um, the noisy cricket, the original. OG Noisy Cricket with the Mutilator RDA. So this is probably like the oldest setup that I have right now, like that I've had for a long time. Um, yeah. Yeah, sales for Labor Day for sure. I'm kind of waiting. Um, I want to get like a discount code or something, you know? Um, yeah. This is such a, man, these things are so junk these uh, noisy crickets they are so shitty but when they work they're so fun to play with and this really opened up my eyes at least to um, series you know vaping series and they're just such junk I've gone through like probably 20 of these things and that that's no exaggeration I have purchased that one time I purchased four of these at one time because the buttons they always they always shit out man. or just the threads tear apart or just something, you know. Yeah, Easy Dripper, RDA, boom, that's fun. Especially if you're in the car a lot. Yeah, this is a nice little school setup. The Mutilator came out, right? Like It was kind of like, it wasn't like a copy of the Mutation X. It was, was it just the Mutation when it first came out? I don't remember. It wasn't like a copy of that, but they were definitely like riffing on the name of it, right? And, um, the deck style kind of but yeah great great rda it was, this thing was like nine dollars new for me when i bought it and it wasn't that long after it came out it just never caught on yeah man series i like that heat i like that heat from a series vape and um it's hard to replace that even with a pretty conservative setup this build, I think, is like 0.3, which is pretty conservative for me, even on series. And it's just round wire, spaced round wire. Uh, but it's such a hot, dense vape. And look, I mean, already look how much fucking vape's in here. It's crazy. You know, that's one of the reasons why I really like um, pods and these kind of setups nowadays. It's not even the nicotine anymore for me. It's just that I live in a tiny apartment and this is what happens. It gets clouded out so fucking fast, even with the air on. So, yeah, these are just so much fucking, there's so much less hassle. But in this um, pod or this tank and in this pod here, we have um, Vape Tasia's um, Rainbow Road Salt. 24 milligram, I think. And in here I have Gorilla Custard um, Strawberry. I have the whole line of Gorilla Custard. I'm going to do a review of it um, probably tomorrow. Actually film the review tomorrow. 
um, good stuff, really good stuff, actually. Um, a good traditional old school kind of custard. The Gollum, yeah, fuck yeah. That's a nice little set up there, church. Um, and then on here, what do I got in here? Um, so this is the, I'm making my strawberry custard out of here. I'm super not happy with it, but um, it's the Aeolus. Aeolus, I think is what Matt from Sukhumat said. That that's how it's pronounced, the Aeolus. And I have this on the Sandman. Killer little setup. Nice little 22 mil banger. Um, it's still my favorite RDA of all time. I don't know what it is. I just love it. I absolutely love it so much. Um, it's pretty easy to build on. It's got a four post, uh, four hole, um, three post, four hole, you know, kind of build deck. Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, then I'm rocking. Um, I took this out of stack mode and uh, I was rocking a, ta a tank on here in stack mode. Um, this is the uh, Mage Mech V2. And I have the, uh, I took it out of stack and put my avocado on there. Love the avocado. This is, this is one of my go-tos. Um, like if I, if I'm not using, like if I'm not in a tank mode, right? I want like an RDA experience, but I'm driving or I'm going to be at work. Um, I still go to the avocado quite a bit. I changed the O-rings on here so that it actually um, I put like a third party O-ring on here so that the cap sits tight. And it's a great vape, man. What a killer vape. This is where, I mean, this this rein, basically reinvented vaping in a major way. I think this doesn't get a lot of credit, um, but like the whole RDTA craze really kind of started with the Avocado 22. Um, and that was basically like a riff on the Genesis Atomizer. Um, and I always wanted to like Genesis Atomizers back in the day um, because it was like, seemed like that's what everybody liked. Um, but I just never could get into a groove with it with a Genesis Atomizer. Um, I, I never could get my mesh uh, wicking right. It just, it never worked the way I wanted it to work, right? Especially because I was trying it with like three milligram e-liquid. And that's like, you know, a Genesis might be nice with like a saltnik e-liquid or something because you're getting very little fucking vapes. You know what I mean? Um, at least I was, right? Um, I always thought like this Genesis would be amazing if I could use a cotton wick. And there were some people that would use cotton wicks and stuff, but um, for the most part, it was that, um, you know, that stainless steel mesh. And, um, yeah, didn't groove on it. You don't like it at all, huh? Um, I don't, you know, I haven't really messed with the original at all. I've, I've vaped the whole bottle of strawberry and started vaping the strawberry salt nick, um, Gorilla Custard. Have not messed with the original. Um, I gave the bottle, um, I took a little bit out to, for the review, but I gave the bottle of the tobacco one to uh, Naki, who's been on the here, and he's usually in chat. Um, I sent him a message. He's going to be on the show tonight, um, but I didn't hear back from him. So um, I see what his opinion on that was. Yeah, basically all I did was strawberry cream, strawberry. Yeah, strawberry cream. That's basically all I, that's all I like to be. I like this one in stack mods, like in the series mods. For me, this one really, really, really shines if you put a lot of fucking heat on it. Um, beyond, you know, really though, that's, that's, I had heard so much about this one that I, I think I overhyped it in my own mind, which I know better, right? I know better. Um, but when I had it, when I got it, I was just making it like a normal RDA. Um, I was underwhelmed until I used it on a stack mod in a series uh, setup with like a really hot fucking build. And uh, that shit's good. This one is really good in certain circumstances, but it wasn't as, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, Giz's custard, man, pff, amazing, um, but really unique. Really, really unique. So. Hotter the better, baby. Absolutely. Especially with this one. You got, you got to put the heat on it. Some e-liquids are just like that. You got to break that shit down. You got to really throw some fucking power on it. 
Otherwise, you're just not you're not getting what you what you want to be getting. And I've had some e-liquids that are the that are the opposite that are really good at low heat. You know, I've had some e-liquids that are really good in temperature control mode that no one uses. I'll use it every once in a while because everything I use all stainless steel. Basically, it's all I use now. And um, I don't even use nichrome very much anymore. Very rarely. Um, but yeah, so stainless steel. So I, I will use temperature control every once in a while. And I have had some e-liquids that really shine in that shit. Yeah, can you be for sure. Um, Giz's custard is not what I would call a traditional custard. It's kind of like a pudding. It's very textured. It's got like a really, um, it's got like a, a pancake thing going on, or like a pound cake. It's got definitely like a, a thickness to it. Um, and the, the aroma to me is like freshly baked, freshly cooked pancakes. That's like what I smell. And it definitely affects the flavor. You know, aroma is half the flavor. So, Wow. Hell yeah. Let's see, man. DIY e-liquid is always better than commercial e-liquid. Except, except for very, very few occasions. Um, there's a couple recipes that I wish I had that I don't. Um, that, that I can't replicate and I've never seen anyone else replicate correctly uh, because I've tried every recipe I can get my fucking hands on. Um, uh, Charlie Noble's Siren Song, super unique flavor. Never seen anybody replicate it correctly. I've tried nothing. So. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about this more. I'm gonna do like an episode of the show where I talk a little bit about um, my feelings on the whole Adore e liquid thing. But um, Shane brought it up a little bit. He kind of did. Um, hell yeah! I have to try that. Um, 3D custard is it on um, e liquid recipes elr.com or whatever? Because I'll try it. If, if you're vouching for it, I'll definitely try it. And yes, you do need to try it. Gives us custard. It's delicious. Um, so the Adore liquid thing, um, I think uh, like everybody else, I was super disappointed, um, but not super surprised. Um, Don did a lot of really good things for me, right? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of figured. Charlie Noble, um, I kind of figured that was the, the case. Uh, um so Don did a lot of really cool things for me. Um, but I mean, like the relationship between me and Don from the very beginning was um, weird because um, she had heard that I was talking shit about her before I even knew who she was, right? Um, before I even knew who she was, she had heard I was talking shit. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are. And so Giz arranged for me and her to like have a conversation. And this guy that, um, that he's, a, he's a piece of shit. I don't even want to say his name. This guy who does YouTube or used to do YouTube um, and was working with Don uh, basically talked a bunch of shit on me. For, for some reason, I did like a show with him where we tried um, some Adore e liquid and I didn't like every single one of them. And so he went back and just said, oh, he fucking hates all your shit. Um, don't fucking work with him, blah, blah, right? Um, so when I got to talk to her and I was like, I don't hate all your shit. You know, I, I like a lot of your shit. I just don't like all your shit, you know? Um, so that's kind of how our relationship started. And um, so it was already a little bit strained, you know, from the very beginning. Um, didn't start like on the most positive note. Um, but then after that, like we had a great friendship. And it was a friendship. I mean, um, I, I can't speak for her, but for on my end, I always considered her a friend. Um, she was very good to me. Whenever new releases came out, she would include me in sending out review samples. She never included me in any of like the events, right? Like the like, oh, what's this new flavor, blah, blah. Um, because I was never like one of those. And by one of those, I mean, the people who would have her logo blasted everywhere and would have like always talking about how great everything she did is. Um, I just wasn't one of those guys. I'm, I'm never gonna be one of those guys for any company, right? If I like your shit, then I will talk about how much I like your shit. Um, but I'm never gonna like just, like rant about every single time about how no nothing ever fucking 
nothing's better and I, I don't this is all I vape and because uh, that's just not going to be reality right um, yes the people that kiss her ass yeah <laughs> um, yeah no um, so I'm going to get to all these things that everyone's saying so Shane everybody um so uh so our relationship was good so like in, as far as like diying right she had started releasing her one shots and as like a cool thing because i'd been talking about how i wanted to get into diy she actually put you she sent me a bunch of stuff right like um nicotine uh vg that already had three milligram nicotine in it um a bunch of one shots had fresh come on the show and like walk me through doing one shots and shit did some cool stuff for me like that right um if i if i like wanted e-liquid i never like i mean i hardly ever asked her for any e-liquid but if i did want e-liquid um i think like twice i would like message her and say hey like um what's up with some e-liquid um or once i think once where i was like i legitimately want some e-liquid to vape and then one time it was like the last release that she did or the last like the last whatever the consequence when I didn't get it where everybody else got, got it. Right. And, um, and so I messaged her and I'm like, Hey, you know, are you going to send this, um, out for a review? And she did. Um, and then, so a couple of months went by, you know, and it's like, I just, I remember for some reason, I just reached out to her, like asking for nothing. I wasn't asking for anything. I didn't want anything. Um, but, um, I just said like, say, Hey, what's up? You know, how are you doing? And she never responded to that. And uh, she never responded to anything else after that. There was one more thing where like, um, during the August 8th thing, right? Where like all the companies, you had to get your SKUs in, you had to give all your artwork in to get like approval from the FDA. Like you had to like get before this date, you needed to have all your shit together, right? So she was going to put my, um, put white girl, um, if, if not even, if not release it, she was going to help me get all my shit together so that I could have it in before the date. So that if I ever did want to release it, I could. Right. And so I actually had some artwork made. Um, it's the white girl artwork. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but, um, but there's some problems with it and it didn't meet all the, the guidelines. Right. So um, I sent the artwork in to not to her directly, but to someone who works for her or worked for her. I don't know. Um, it was Rochelle from vape with me, or whatever the name of her channel is. And um, I didn't know, it was like, this was like the day of the deadline, right? And so um, uh, she's like, well, th this isn't gonna work, you know? Like, uh, this needs to be changed. This, all this stuff needs to be added to it. And I was like, well, um, but I was like, this is, I, I'm at work <laughs> and this artwork was made by someone else and I, don't have, I can't contact them right now. And, um, and it was just like a really tense situation. There was a lot of back and forth messages and between me and Russell until finally I just like messaged on. I was just like, you know, I really appreciate it, but like, I, there's nothing I can do here, you know? And, um, that was kind of like the last real interaction that I had with Dawn. And, um, I did appreciate that she was trying to help me. She really was trying to help me. And, um, cause she was going to get nothing out of this, you know, um, unless of course I sold white girl on her site later on, but that wasn't like a thing that we'd even talked about. She was genuinely trying to help me. And um, basically at the end, I just had to say like, look, I, I can't get the artwork changed um, right now. And it had to be in by that day. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, for sure. Lab burst, hit me up, man. I'm, I'm more than interested in it. It was just like that at that moment, it was just like, this has to be done right now. And it was out of my hands. I couldn't do it. So, um, but that was like the last real interactions that we had. Um, I had heard some stuff that, that she was, um, I had heard some stuff that was going on, you know, and I had heard um, one weird thing, okay, in my opinion, okay, so uh, this show used to have a lot of panelists, right, <laughs> um, that were kind of part of that crew. And um, after Don stopped responding to my messages and stuff, right, um, a lot of those people start, stopped coming on the show. Now, I don't know if that's related. Um, I have heard people say that she was saying things about me. I don't know. I, I don't know, and I don't care. Um, I, I do feel bad because I think a lot of people genuinely loved her products, right? And um, and there were some of her products that I thought were fantastic, man. Uh, Banana Bondage was fucking banging, man. It was banging. 
And um, a lot of those flavors were great, you know. And banana bondage, especially, I come back to that because it was like a banana when there were no good bananas, you know. The, luckily, there's there are some good bananas now. Um, basics banana cream pie, killer banana flavor. Um, there's some there's some good ones, you know. But um, but that was like that was like the first one I ever had, and um, and there was just a lot of good flavors, you know. You know, and um, I think she stopped answering our texts because you know she was doing her own thing. She was doing her shit, so. Um, I, all I saw, so I will say this, all I saw, I saw the video, um, that, um, what's his name put out. I can't remember what his name is. The, the vape channel guy. I saw his video, <clears throat> read his little blurb rant thing, you know, and, um, you know, it seemed, it seemed like that was pretty typical interaction with her, you know, for people. Um, I've heard a lot of horror stories, but I've heard a lot of people that had great stories. So, um, it is what it is, you know? Um, I do feel bad because um, we're talking about um, people's livelihood, right? Uh, we're talking about her business. Um, I never I never like to see people do bad, you know? I always wanna see people prosper. Even if, even if I'm not part of it, even if I'm not in that shit, you know, like I still want to see you succeed. I don't want to see you fucking fail. I don't want to see you do badly and fuck your life up, you know. No, I didn't see um, the trucking stream. I I started to watch the trucking stream. I I, I, I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it. Um, I don't. I'm going to eventually, um, but again, like I don't want to feed into the drama as much. Um, I. Man, trucking always gets those scoops on all that drama shit. <laughs> um, when I saw that, though, like when I saw it, like I said, I feel bad, but I wasn't surprised. Um, I wasn't surprised at all. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I mean, Shane, if we're talking real, I mean, she's not going to. She's not going to change what she's doing. I mean, I can't imagine that she would at least. So um, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't see. I don't. I don't know what DGLSB said on the stream, and so I could be missing a big portion of what is is going on here. But um, yeah, I, I don't think that it's, anything's going to change, man. No, for sure. No, I think that I think that DJLSB should have said all this shit that he's been sitting on when he figured it out when he's when he knew this was going on. Because the way that he, the way that he reported it, was like, oh, I've known this for a long time. But I was like, afraid, was he afraid of getting deported or something? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's not surprising, Jane, at all. I mean, it's, I, again, I don't want to slander anybody. And I don't want to like say something where I don't know for sure. But again, like I, like I was saying, not surprised. I was not surprised. Some people. Um, like when you see people, how people interact with, I don't know. There's just, there was just always something off. There's always something off. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame, you know? Um, now you're making me want to go watch the fucking truck and stream. <laughs> Maybe I will. Maybe I'll watch it after the show. Yeah, deported. See, I was afraid of being deported. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's a good enough excuse, man. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I buy that shit. You're going to let, I don't know. You're going to let everybody fucking vape this shit and support this shit um, when you know what's going on with it, you know? I don't, I don't think that's it. Sometimes you have to, like, do what's good for the community, what's good for everyone else, not just what's good for yourself. So. What? Oh, come on. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say this. At least he did come out with it eventually. Um, I, I got nothing against DJLSB, and I can't – I don't understand. You know, I don't understand that struggle because I've never had to fucking immigrate to a different country. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that is, that is sketchy. You know, it's scary to, like, think that someone has has that kind of power over you where they could have you fucking deported, right? Um, 
and that's a lesson for all of us, you know, to have a little bit of sympathy and a little bit of empathy for people um, who immigrate to this country. Um, that shit's scary and it's terrifying. Um, and at least he did come out with it eventually, right? He did come out with like the truth and everything. Um, but again, I, if, if you don't want to say that shit publicly, right? He would, you could all, you could always fucking uh, tell someone else and have them bring it out, right? That happens in the media constantly. Like, oh, uh, you know, an unnamed source, a reliable source. Come out, and have someone else come out and say that shit because they had video, you know? They had video footage. So it's not like they couldn't substantiate what they were saying. Could have They could have released it in some way. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, telling a few close friends, they told anyone they knew. That's cool, you know. Uh, I wish he would have told more people. That's all. Do I think that that e-liquid is bad in any way? No, I don't. I don't. Um, yeah, you're right, Shane. Yeah. 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 Sin, you are totally right. Yeah. And yeah, um, two months before the video dropped. Damn. See that in that case, I we didn't I didn't hear a shit about it, you know. But again, that's not surprising. So no, it's not fucking right. It's not right. The H one B visas are crazy. Yep. Yeah. Huh? Nobody. No famous people are on. Um, yeah, you shook him around for him. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's a shame. It's a total shame about the um, the whole situation. I wish that um, I wish things would could have gone differently for everyone involved. It's fucked up. Uh, but again, do I think that anyone who bought that e-liquid at that last, even in the last days, do I think that was bad e-liquid? No, I don't. Um, when I first started vaping, man, we were vaping fucking e-liquid that we knew was made in people's fucking uh, bathrooms and shit, you know, um, that was made in much worse conditions than that. And I'm not saying that's right or good or any of that shit, right? Because it's disgusting and it's bad and it's all those things. But it's not going to make you sick or anything, right? Um, I know they were talking about like, oh, it's right next to the where he's building the coils and shit. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't. Okay, I will say this. Even though I hadn't had a door in a couple months, three or four months, um, I, I would notice there would be very varying. It would vary the, the, the e-liquid. It wasn't always the same. It wasn't it, there was times where it was yeah no for sure like Ben just said the first the first batch and the second batch different so no you're exactly right son Adora isn't the only person only company doing this there's a lot of companies in it. it used to be all companies did this it used to be that there were no companies doing fucking labs and shit you know so um so that part of it is what it is. And um, see, LabWorks knows. And since that I should hear Daniel's side, I mean, basically all I've heard is Daniel's side. Uh, I haven't heard all of his story yet. Um, but I, that's the only thing that I've heard from this is from Daniel directly. So um, with his, uh, you know, unlisted video and then his, you know, his post about it. I will go watch. Um, I will go watch the stream from Trucker and, and see what's up. So. Jay Hayes, what's happening, brother? Jay Hayes, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I tell you, um, I wish that we could go back in time and and uh, know a little bit more about the situation at hand. But like Sin said, um, 
if you're vaping commercial e-liquid, there's a good chance you're vaping some shit like that. So, boom. <laughs> yeah. And like Kenny B said, I don't think you would vape half the stuff if you seen where it was made. Um, you know what? It is what it is, man. Like, you know, I think that uh, there is there is those that's why back in the day um <clears throat> back in the day we used to say um before the before all the shit hit the fan with the government we used to say fucking um there needs to be some kind of regulation to avoid these kind of incidents right there needs to be some kind of some agency that's that's involved with like checking these e-liquids because it was like the e-liquids, that's the shit we're putting in our bodies, right? The mods and stuff and all the, the gear, like, I never felt like that should be part of the, you know, regulation. But, um, I mean, dealing with electricity, maybe it should be. I don't know. But, obviously, this shouldn't be the way that it's happening now. But, you know, e-liquid is something you should fucking, uh, this, you should feel safe about using, you know? So... <laughs> no more kitty pools. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a fucking shame, you know. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna do, uh, you know, like I always do. There's some companies that I trust, um, that I know are legit, and there's some companies that um, I know are shit, and there's some companies that um, I won't fucking fuck with, and there's some that I will, you know. And um, but for the most part, I make my own shit. <laughs> Kenny B. Um, no worries. I just saw your I saw your message, uh, ADB. No problem. Next week, I got you, brother. Um, I beat my own e-liquid. I highly recommend everyone take that step of at least learning how to vape your how to make your own uh, e-liquid. It, it, it's it's a game changer, man. Both financially and you're getting what you want because you're making it exactly the way you want it. Um, you might stumble into something beautiful, man. You know, like with me, I. I fucking came, I came into having, I, I came into having an e-liquid that I fucking love more than any e-liquid I've ever had. And I, I made it. So, um, get into it, man. And then you're going to be, you're going to know the story behind that e-liquid because you fucking made it. You made it. You did it. Boom, bam. Oh, I didn't even think it would, it would close down at all. So Jerry said her website is up and running again. I never thought it would close down. Not at not at all surprised. Not at all surprised. And there are going to be people that fucking that buy it. Of course there is. Good for you, Sen. Good for you. Yeah, I, I, I always wanted a very specific e-liquid that it seemed like nobody made. So I made it. You know what I mean? Um, I did have uh, like some recipes that were gifted to me by some e-liquid companies that shut down. And um, one specifically um, called Sweet Lucy by a great company, a great friend of mine. And um, after that company folded, he gave me that recipe. And that's where the name White Girl comes from. Not because not only not only because it's addictive like White Girl, but also Sweet Lucy. Right. It's kind of a play on, you know, the name, it's a female name, Lucy, white girl. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, if anybody thought she wasn't going to continue business, then they were crazy because she's going to keep selling that shit as long as she can. And I had in, in no way thought that that was going to be um, her, the end of her business. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's the same with me, Shane, is that um, I had a very, very particular idea of what I wanted. Like, I knew what it, in my mind, I knew what it was going to taste like, but I never could get there 100%. Sweet Lucy, like the, the e-liquid that um, I got the recipe for, was close. It was a damn fine e-liquid, but there was a lot of problems with that e-liquid, too. Like, it had um, it had sweetener in it, and it had, or it didn't have sweetener, but it had, it was like a 50-50 blend, and um, there was just a lot of things. It was like, it was like a really old school e-liquid. I had a lot of old school trappings. And um, when he gave me the recipe, it was like two parts this, one part that. And so um, uh, it took, you know, so Fixie Danner said, how long did it take to dial in white girl? <clears throat> a long time. Um, years? 
you know, I was making changes um, up until early this year um, with, the, with the butterscotch. The butterscotch was the thing that took the longest to really sort out, especially considering that um, that different companies' butterscotches are radically different, right? And so I had bought in one from like uh, uh, Capella and then another one from a different company thinking they were going to be similar enough, right? Because these are things you have to learn on the go. And um, they were radically different. <laughs> so um, I found a good butterscotch that I like, and I put it at a percentage that I like as well. Um, when I was given uh, recipes in the past, um, I found, you know, there's just some things that were like, some things that were like, people are using way too low of percentages for what I wanted of flavorings. People were using way too high of percentages. Um, so it's about dialing in those like exact numbers. Um, it's, and it's really less about like, cause I used to think that like, oh, I'm a cook. I'm, you know, I, I used to work as a chef. I'm going to be good at this. Um, it's really not about, it's not, it's not that kind of having a good palate is, is great. And it's, it's going to help you in your process. Um, but it's really more chemistry than cooking. You know what I mean? It's really more like baking than, than like cooking a fucking, um, cooking a pork chop you know what i'm saying it's 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 not like doing it to flavor it's there's a process there and so some you know and then like there's a lot of times um that like i would i was like canceling flavors out because like i was putting too much of one thing and then like the other thing was just getting canceled out and then like so it's like like your appendix you don't need that shit so you just take it out you know um so it's gonna be a long time to get to where i am now <clears throat> white girls are very stripped down um no frills recipe at this point um it doesn't have anything superfluous everything there is there for a reason um i have people still that are like um, you, you're doing too much <laughs> there's too much of this too much of that or there's just too many ingredients to, you know all together but trust me at this point i've made so many batches of it that it is exactly what it needs to be so boom now you guys you know that's it's it is she's not going to change her prices or her website or anything because she, uh, she thinks, and probably correctly, most people didn't hear about this. Most of her customers didn't hear about this shit. Um, and she's going to, people are going to forget about it. People are going to forget about it. So that's what it is, man. <clears throat> yeah, one shots are a good value. If you know you like the flavor, if you know you like the e-liquid. I always like when companies offer one shots, like from companies that I enjoy their e-liquids. Yeah, um, DIYing um, ADV man for like seventy to a hundred dollars, you could you could start DIYing. If you if all you're looking for is a vanilla custard, you're good to go, man. Yeah, Fresh's Custard's good. Yeah. Dr. Krimi's is still in business. See, there you go. See? Dr. fucking Krimi's is still in business. I, I You don't have to yell at me, Dustin Vapor. <clears throat> I hear you. I want some, too. I, I don't have any right now. I got to make some. Got to make some. Got to have the money. Um, yeah, that's it. Got to have the money. <laughs> that's it. Um, it's going to cost me like, you know, for, you know, to make like a thousand, you know, a thousand mils, I can do it for like 35 bucks. Um, but to make more, you know, it costs more. So yeah, no, for sure. So Sen's right. I, I, mean, I was being, I, I was being, I was being overly pessimistic with the, the prices, but you know, Well, I'll tell you what, ADV, as soon as I make some e-liquid, I'll send you some white girl. Better than nothing, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> so, yeah. All right. Well, you know what, you guys? Um, got the got the little lady back there making some dinner. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, Dustin Vapor. I'm just joking, man. Totally joking. Um, got the old lady back there making some dinner. Um, I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, anything like the e-liquid barn or like uh, a lot of those companies will have 
this is the ADV. So a lot of those companies will have like starter kits. Um, a lot of the stuff they have in there, you don't really need, um, but they are a good way to get started, you know, because you can get one price and you just get from, yeah. And you're going to get a lot of e-liquid. So, but also, so one thing is if you know exactly what you want or like what you think you want, um, look up a ton of recipes, see if there's any commonalities between those two. That's what I did a lot of, right? I looked up a lot of like strawberry cream, strawberry custard, that kind of shit, right? And um, I looked through hundreds of recipes and to see if there was any commonalities, like any commonly used um, flavorings and stuff, right? Um, and surprise, surprise, there was a lot of really commonly used um, flavorings for what I was looking for. And so um, after a lot of trial and error, I mean, I got to where I wanted to be, but if you're looking for something very simple and very tried and true, like a vanilla custard, there are some really established fucking recipes out there. Like Shane was just talking about earlier. He, he fucking, um, he just found a really good one. So hit him up. He loves it. He's the same kind of guy as you. He likes that shit. Okay, everybody, I'm going to get out of here. Much love to everybody. Thanks so much to, uh, uh, to everybody for coming. Thanks to Kenny B. Man, good to see you. And uh, much love. See everybody later. Talk to you guys on the next one. Boom, boom, boom. Peace out.